Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video is going to look at a homework example uh, when it comes to setting up our own uh, function inside of x86 assembly language. So we're going to be looking at the runtime stack, push and pop operations, call operations, and, and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So that's what we're up to. And so let's take a look at the problem here. It's basically Here's an equation. You give me an x and then give me a c, and I'll give you 8x plus c. And that's just that's just how it's going to go. And so it's a little tricky because you know we don't have access like we do in high-level languages to function parameters. We don't have pretty much access to anything when it comes to parameters. All we have are registers and push-pop operations. And this is just the first step toward doing everything the the more perfect way, the better way. The correct way in uh, in chapter eight, and so let me just let's just get this kind of stuff started here. I do need some I, well, I need some variables for x, c, and result, and um, they're unsigned int this time. So I'm actually using just an int d word, but not signed d word. And so I have an x variable, and I'm just uninitialized. I have c, but unfortunately c is a reserved word in assembly language I'll just use cc instead and I'll use result keyword question mark so all these will use these but we're not uh, we're not doing anything with them here in the current moment and I also need three things to print out I'm just gonna steal them and I'll just say uh, x prompt uh, byte and then this guy comma zero and um, let's see give me a second get everything. I like to do this cathartic for me, I suppose. That doesn't, you don't have to do things, of course, like this way. Okay, so there's your X prompt. Oops. And then we can go ahead and set up the C prompt. Enter a value for C. And then I'm also going to have the, this thing here, this result. So I'm just call it res I'll just call it result. And then it'll be the same thing, byte, put this here, comma Z. Okay. So that should do things, not, you know, um, we'll see when we get there. Um, so let's just try this out. I need to move into the EDX register, the offset of uh, the X prompt. And then I can call write string. All right. And then I can call right after it, I can call write read int, because I'm trying to get an, an, an integer value. And x is a D word, and call int gets me a D word in the EAX register, so I can move into the EAX register, I'm sorry, into x, whatever's in EAX. So that is everything I need to do to get me the x value. Move the offset, print the string, get the value, put it into the x variable, and then do the same thing here for the C prompt. And instead of putting the value into x, we put it into c. And then um, and that's it for the moment. Let me, let's just run this and just kind of see, make sure everything's going like we kind of expect it to. If I have some error here, what did I do wrong? Result. Oh, I have result twice. Oh, yeah, result is the very, uh, duh. You're probably screaming like, what's wrong with you? Um, and I'll just call it, I'll just call it final output and so let's run this and you go okay enter a value for x 7 enter a value for c 9 and then nothing happens of course because that's our program doesn't do anything as such in the moment here but let's just kind of figure out what's going to happen what i'm going to do i'm just going to let me just set up a basically a skeleton function here that's called equation and I'm going to call it equation, and it's going to call it equation proc. And I need a ret here, and then I need equation end p. So a return, a ret is a return. Exit is an exit. Those are two completely different things when it comes to you know they they, they get you to the same sometimes to the same place, but uh, but generally speaking, a return just means get me out of the function I'm in. But an exit means get me out of the whole program. Just, I'm done. Like, just like halt, you know, scratch record kind of thing. 
And so you have to watch out. And I need a ret inside of here. Otherwise, the code's just going to keep on going. This Things work a little differently here at the low level. If I don't have a return statement, the code pointer will just go and redo main again. It, it, gets, it does get crazy, and we do forget every so often to put a ret in here. But what of what you know? But this is my skeleton for the function. So what I want to do is call that function. Well, let me just say set up the parameters. I can. Oh, I didn't do it too bad there. Set up the parameters. Then I want to call equation. And so, and I want this thing to return in the EAX register the result of, you know, 8x plus c. But, and that's our general rule. The return value gets put into the EAX register. You've, you've kind of noticing that already with readint, and maybe you've noticed it with other functions if you've used them already in the Irvine library. So I say, okay, call equation, set up the parameters, call that equation, and then move into the, that result variable, move whatever's in EAX after the equation returns, and then now let's just, let's print that. Oops, this, what did, how did this thing get like blown up out of here? There we go. And so what do I want to do here? Do all this stuff. I want to print out the, what did I call it again? Final output. Put the final output into the offset call the read string. I don't need to read string anymore, but I do need to move into the EAX registers, whatever stored in result before I call the right int. And then I want an end line, so I gotta do a call CRLF, and then a system pause, which is a call wait message. We're getting closer to what we want. We still haven't initialized, we haven't done any of the work of the function, but if I get the errors right, oops, silly me, semicolon, not double slash, oops, what I do? I have that in a couple places. Yeah, I got. I was coding in C earlier about ten minutes ago, so you can't fault me. Okay, so there we go. Run the program. Enter a value for x. Yep, fifteen. Value for c, four, and then four prints out because why? Because why is that? Because it's uninitialized and read int. And oh, right, this case, yeah, I want to move whatever's in EAX. So it's in this case, just running through whatever was the last thing I input would be the thing that goes into the result. But we obviously want to change that. Okay, so how we go about doing that is as such. And so you might see here unsigned int x, and then you might see here unsigned int x and think, oh, Brad is letting me go crazy and letting me use global variables as parameters. And that is absolutely 100% not the way things are supposed to go. These are completely different scopes. This is global scope. This is function scope, you know, local scope to this function. Once you hit this closing curly brace, this goes away. So you have to watch out. I did not, this was not intentional. Nothing is like this. It's just, this is how you would, you would write things if you were writing real code. You just have to understand the scoping. So this means a parameter, and this means a parameter, and then, and this was just so you could store the values here in main. Okay, so I say setting up the parameters. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, this is, I'm just going to have to do this, say whatever's in X is going to go into the EAX register, whatever is in C is going to go into the EBX register, then I'm going to call the equation. And so that means I need to set things up here. So I have to know what the inputs are expected. And I have to say, okay, the EAX register is going to get the X value, and the EBX register is going to get the C value, and then the output in this case will be in the EAX register, and it will be 8X plus C. I'll put that in parentheses. That's what we're going for. So without that, if you don't know this, you're going to have to reverse engineer it. I mean, just takes how long, how good are you at reverse engineering? You know, that kind of thing. And who would you want to do that? Wouldn't you rather have some documentation? So this is very nice. It tells me exactly what to expect. So I know I want to put X into the EAX register and C into the EBX register, and it'll do the math. Now we just have to, to finish up and do the math here. And I, I thought this out, I, I feel smartly, 
because if I have to multiply EAX, whatever this EAX register is by eight, all I have to do since it's already in there is just say, hey, add, add me to me and add me to me. And this takes whatever came in as X and it doubles it and then it doubles it again. And I got to do this one more time. And what that did was it multiplied something by eight because one plus one makes it two, two plus two makes it four, four plus four makes it eight. So whatever value is in EAX has been multiplied by eight. And all I have to do now is add the EBX register to this because that's what the C is. And at the end of the day, I'm done. This EAX register holds 8x plus C. I'm ready to return back. And the EAX register then gets caught right here and then put into the result. And so this other, you know, the, a couple other rules, and in this case you're not going to see anything. You will see things as you push forward absolutely 100%. Is it says, you know, make sure to do any pushes and pops of anything that get modified that aren't the EAX register. And then and make sure only the EAX register is modified. And, um, and we see that only the EAX register is modified. If you think, did things differently on your end, then you would have to push and pop things. But I tried to set it up so I wouldn't have to do that extra work. Because if the EAX register is the thing that goes back, and if I replaced it with X, I did some kind of anything weird, you're not going to get the result you want. The EAX register holds the result of this. So let me see here. So if I put 12 in here, 12 times 8 is 96, and I put 5, I should get 101, and I do. And now everything's working properly. Everything is working as I expect it to. If I, this is getting to be a little too much, maybe. Nope, I can get it all on one. You just kind of go with it and just trust it. Here you go. So what am I doing one more time here? So... I'm getting prompting and printing out enter value for x, putting the, the value into x. Hey, give me a c value, putting the value into c. And now that I have this function written, now I know what is expected of me and what I'll get out of it as long as I obey the contracts. So this is saying put, put whatever x value you want into the EAX register. And again, the, it's just a coincidence that the names are the same. But notice over here, there's no such thing as x or c inside of the, the function itself over here. They're just parameters used, or registers used as parameters at this point. There's no, you wouldn't even, you know, they're unrecognizable if you, if you didn't know that you, you know, we kept following along for the last 12 minutes. here. So I take whatever comes in, X is EAX, C is EBX, go in here, do the 8X, fancy, I don't have to do an IMOL or anything like that. I can just add myself three times over. And it's even faster than a multiplication. And then I add EBX in, return back. EAX now holds the return value, which gets put into result. And now I'm ready to just print that out like anything else. Print the final output, move result into the EAX register, call it, clean up, call it a day. And everything's just going to magically work. 11 plus uh, 4 is 92. 11 times 8 plus 4 is 92. And... I would test this more, but it's looking pretty good. This is pretty solid stuff here. You would maybe want to test fringe cases, zeros and negatives and positives and things like that to make sure that everything is working out for you. And of course, you got to make sure, you know, this doesn't work for every single value of X because of overflow. So, you know, so you just have to watch out for that. Uh, you get, you know, up to something about 500 million something before uh, the function will blow out on you and give you incorrect results. Well, anyway, that covers everything I wanted to cover in this video to do this problem. You're going to see this more and more moving forward. So please, please, please practice and get used to this. So it will not be a big deal when we get to Chapter 8. But as always, if you have any questions or concerns or anything, please uh, email me at swordb at cod.edu. Or you can also get a hold of me here in the YouTube comments. Uh, so thanks for sticking it out with me as always. Uh, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.